Today in After Effects, we're gonna find out how to make this cool psychedelic effect. It's trippy, it's fast, and it's simple. Let's get to it. Tip tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today we're inside of After Effects taking a look at how to create this trippy uh, psychedelic style animation here. Now this is made with a series of semicircles or uh, well, one of them is a semicircle, one's just a sort of half circle stroke. Um, and you can see that they start off all in alignment and they, as they spin they sort of come in and out creating these waves completely disconnecting and then reconnecting into this wave again. Really cool, really simple. To get the effect, uh, I'll just show you this one simple one by itself. All the um, parts of the circle spin out of shape, come back together, form a nice cool little waving S shape and go back and expand again. And obviously this will infinitely loop as well. Now, a lot simpler than it looks, a lot quicker than it looks. So let's just dive right in and get to it. So I'm going to start by creating a new composition. This one's going to be 800 pixels square and 30 frames per second is fine. 10 second duration is what you're looking for. Um, if you want it to be a bit quicker, you can do uh, sort of seven seconds. Um, I quite like the slower look because otherwise it can get quite discombobulating very quickly. Just for reference, we're going to add a new solid into the background uh, and we're going to make this a sort of pinkish color. Um, I've got a color palette over here. So I'm just going to select this color and pop that pink in there. And that's just going to work as a background for us so we can easily see what's going on here. So first thing you need to do is go up to your shape tool, make sure it's on ellipse and set your stroke settings. We don't want a fill. So you just alt click on the fill box until the red line goes through it. And on our stroke, we want to pick our first color. Uh, I'm going to have it be sort of this dark grayish red sort of down there. And hit OK. Stroke width of 30 works for this size, but obviously that's going to be dependent on what the size of your canvas is. I'm just going to draw myself a circle like so. If your um, anchor point doesn't automatically go to the center of the circle, you can hit Control Alt and Home to do that. And then in the align window, I'm just going to pop that to the center of our composition. So let's zoom in. If you hit U twice with your layer selected, that's going to bring up all of your options for that layer. Uh, and under ellipse path one, you want to change the size down until your strokes uh, meet, which will, for this one will be 30 because obviously we have a stroke width of 30. So doing so will create a perfectly solid circle for us here. We then want to go to this add option and choose trim paths. And that's going to allow us when we twirl that down to drag our stroke until it's only half of a circle. So we'll just put that at 50%. Then we can offset this so that it's flat on the top. If you want it to be sideways or upside down, you don't need to, but we do. So we're going to offset that by negative 90 degrees. And this is the first part of our circle. So we're going to rename that by hitting enter and call it one. Now, very simple. We're going to duplicate this. Uh, if you press U twice on that layer again, that will bring up all of the options that you need. And we're just going to increase the size until the uh, stroke barely touches the edge of this current stroke. Now I know because my stroke width is 30, um, this sized circle is actually 60 points wide. So if we increase it by a factor of 60, i.e. the size becomes 90, then it will be exactly the um, touching the outer edge of that first circle. Press U to collapse that, duplicate it again with Control D, double times U to bring up the options. Now we increase it by 60 again. We're currently on 190. So if we go up to, a, uh, sorry, we're currently on 90. If we go up to 150, that's gonna create a next shape, which is exactly touching the outer edge of our first shape. When you zoom out, you don't see these little pixels in between. If you wanted to, you could decrease them by one, but you don't see them anyway. We're gonna apply a rough effect, so it doesn't really matter. So just go through that until you've got 10 circles or however many you want. I'm gonna do 10 and I'll see you on the other side. So once you've got all 10 of your circles, you can just select all of your layers like so and press U to collapse all of those down. And you can see that we have our 10 shapes. Now, this next step you need to do is alternate the colors. So to do so, you just grab two, four, six, eight, and 10. I'm just holding control and selecting those layers there. Then go up to your stroke color and choose a different stroke color. I'm gonna choose this nice bright option that I've got over here, like so. And that's gonna alternate our strokes for us. 
Now, all the setup is done for this. Um, what you might want to do, I did, was um, add a uh, adjustment layer with Control Alt Y, and then using the effects and presets panel, um, I've got a console which brings up a shortcut, but it's just as simple as clicking your effects and presets panel. Uh, you can add a rough and edges, which is what I did. Um, this will affect everything, including this background solid, but we're going to reapply that outside later. So if you want to, you can hide that now. If you turn on your um, toggle transparency, you'll be able to see your shapes a bit better. With the rough and edges selected, we can just look at uh, decreasing the scale of this sort of thing so that we get a few rough edges here. Uh, maybe increase the complexity of that a little bit up to about five. Uh, fractal influence, we'll leave it one. Uh, and edge sharpness will bring down just a little bit. And uh, maybe we could increase the border a touch. So that's going to look quite cool when it actually comes to these spinning shapes later. So we have our adjustment layer. If we select all 10 of our shape layers like so and hit uh, R to bring up the rotation keyframes, we can click one of these stopwatches and it will create a keyframe for each one of those. If we then go to 10 seconds in, we can click one of the keyframes over here and it will finish creating keyframes for all of them. Okay. Now, whilst we're on our 10th second, we're going to want to start these um, shapes spinning. Now, the way you get this cool effect is that you increase by a full rotation per layer that you're working on. So the first layer in 10 seconds will rotate once. OK, so over the course of 10 seconds, that's going to spin. Looks pretty good. The next layer will rotate twice. The next one three times, the next one four times, the next one five times, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And 10, sorry, I, missed, I couldn't count to 10, apparently. Uh, now you'll notice that each one increases by a factor of, well, I guess 360 degrees each time. So that when these start to spin, they will begin by creating a nice S shape, but the outside ones will get quicker than the inside ones. And the shape will start to sort of come apart, discombobulate. And then towards the end, they'll all start to catch up again, like so. Now, you don't want to add any easing to this because what that means is it will spin out of place, start to reconnect. I like that when it sort of catches up to itself and loop infinitely. Now, this rough and edges looks a bit too strong, so I'm just going to uh, maybe decrease the border a bit there and decrease the complexity. I'm going to put the edge sharpness back up. There we go. That looks pretty good, much better. Um, now we've got this, this is going to work as our sort of inner comp. So I'm going to rename this one inner. Then I'm going to create a new composition, which is 1920 by 1080, but still 10 seconds in length. Like so, we're going to make our viewport fit and we're going to drop our inner composition inside it. We'll rename this one main, okay? Now we have our inner section here, so we're going to need a new solid in that pink color for the background, which is nice. Hmm. I'm going to add a new adjustment layer with Control Alt Y. And on that, I'm just going to add a little bit of noise because I like the way that looks. 10% non-color always looks good to me. Uh, and here's where you can start getting crazy with it. So we can increase the scale of this if we wanted to, maybe to 125. Oops, that is a lot more than 125%, like so. Uh, and then to achieve this sort of effect that I made here in the beginning, as you can see, it's just duplicated and repositioned um, circles all across the page. So that was just a case of going Control D to duplicate, moving to five seconds in the timeline, pressing open square bracket to push that along. And then I moved it to the edge where just those two shapes there connected. I then duplicated it again and dragged it all the way back so that the end met with the beginning so that it will loop seamlessly. And you can see now that we've got shapes starting at different points. You grab both of those, hit Control D. You can then reposition them on the other side. If you scrub through the timeline until you see a point where two sections meet, you can make sure that they're overlapping because that looks quite nice, like so. And then I just took that first inner one again, duplicated that, moved to two and a half seconds, like so, shifted it down until it began overlapping and over until it was roughly in the middle. And then did the same thing over here. And then took both of these, duplicated them, moved them so that they start like so, 
And then I took all four of these layers, oops, excuse me, all four of these layers, pre-composed them, called it bot. I duplicated that and rotated it by 180 degrees to get the top layers. And there you go, you've got your shapes all spinning together and looking cool. And the reason you like doing it separately like this is then you can start to adjust if you want to. Um, inside, we can take these layers and shift them up a bit. And then pressing tab, we can go back to our main and that's gonna bring them in just a little bit closer. So as you can see, pretty cool effect. I quite like it. I think it's really cool, really simple. And if you do it well, you can get some nice sort of stuff going on there with it. Um, try using cameras and stuff to sort of swoop past it and zoom into it and things like that. And hopefully you guys can create some cool effects. So thanks very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I thought this was a nice, cool, simple one. And I'll see you all next time on another episode of Tip Top. Subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.